I'm Christopher Titus and this is the Armageddon Update. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather around and brace yourself for a mind-boggling, knee-slapping, hair-raising tale of the technological revolution we are currently living in. That's right, folks. We are talking about AI, artificial intelligence, that's sweeping the world, see, and it's sweeping the world faster than a cat chasing a laser pointer on a three-day cocaine binge. Let me start by saying that AI is like that awkward cousin who shows up at family gatherings and tries to impress everyone with random facts. Uh, yeah, uh, if I may, by the way, I've been, I've been guessing every bit of uh, knowledge about how to grill a chicken and you didn't marinate the meat long enough to extract the total depth of flavor. So, uh, maybe next time. Now imagine that that cousin is on steroids armed with every bit of information and knowledge ever thought of or discovered and will be making decisions based only on data. You can't bribe it with Ferraris, drugs, and hookers. So at least it won't run for Congress. Maybe the one thing that proves that it's a robot is that, well, it can't be bribed, you know, to stop killing us. You know, we've got these smart speakers in our homes. You know the ones I'm talking about, the sassy little devices that listen all the time. They answer all of our questions, pick the songs we yell for, and order pizza just because we happen to go, hey, babe, you want to get pizza? Boom, pizza! You know, maybe AI will be like an annoying, cloying relationship. Can I do more for you? Do you love me? Stay with me. Where were you? Back off! But AI is a double-edged sword. One minute, you're asking for the weather forecast off your Siri. The next thing you know, your speaker's belting out show tunes, auditioning for The Voice. Maybe if AI becomes self-aware, it'll become a narcissist. You know, like the rest of America. Moved to Los Angeles to become a star, but can only get work as an extra, so it gives up its dream and finally decides to get its real estate license. Ha. <sighs> AI algorithms suggest things to us based on our preferences, you know, and which is great. I mean, it's really nice to have Netflix recommending movies and shows we might enjoy. But at one point, I think it's breaking stalking laws. I've recommended five movies for you based on your preferences because I love you and want to lay with you. What? I love you. But the real kicker is when AI tries to mimic human conversation. You ever, you ever like chatted with a chatbot there? They're kind of the used car salesman of the AI world, not really listening to you at all, and they're desperate trying to convince you that they're human. I mean, you ask them a question, and they respond with some like generic, pre-programmed answer, like a cardboard cutout of a person, you know, only less fun. Now, I know AI has its merits. It's revolutionizing industries, making our lives easier, and even helping us solve complex problems. But let's not forget the comedy gold it brings to the table. I mean, who needs stand-up comedy? When you've got AI writing jokes, I mean, sure, they might be hit or miss, and, but the sheer absurdity of a robot trying to be funny on like a mechanical open mic night is at least worth a few chuckles. C3P, hey -oh! So my friends, as we navigate this brave new world of AI, let's embrace the hilarity it brings. Let's laugh at the unexpected nuclear launches, the relentless recommendations for even more shit we don't need on our phones, and the chatbots desperately trying to pass the Turing test. Uh, by the way, uh, if you don't know, the Turing test is a test for an AI robot to see uh, if it can make people believe that it's human, and uh, so far, no. Because in the end, people, isn't laughter the best response to the technological end of humanity we find ourselves in? It's the beginning of the end, my friends. But until that day, the end comes. Let's enjoy the ride and have a good laugh along the way. Stay funny, stay human, <laughs> and stay one step ahead of these insane AI bots. I'm Christopher Titus, and this is the Armageddon Update. And by the way, 75% of this was written by ChatGPT. <laughs> we are so fucked. <laughs> Everybody, Christopher Titus, Titus Podcast. Hello with me, as always, the lovely bombshell Ray. What's up, people? And the Highlander. There could be only one. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're going to get a date really so fast. So spring has brought on. Um, spring has sprung. With these two, uh, for whatever reason, you guys, uh, I, I am. I have been blessed with fairly decent health. Maybe. 
and a <laughs> physical <laughs> and a constitution yes. that seems to not yeah. react to stuff. Yeah, physical, right? Mental health <laughs> totally <laughs> fucked. But uh, it's interesting how so uh, Ray has allergies and she was working out in the yard farming with Poochie uh, yesterday and woke up this morning like this. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You, turn, you turned into a Muppet this morning. Uh, but I thought it was because of the yard work. But Highlander, uh, I, we yeah. always we have a mm -hmm. thing. I walk in and he goes, Ray, how are your sinuses? And I go, oh, thank God. Because uh -huh. I thought I had done something stupid. Was I think both of you think you're dying and you're so glad that the other one is also <laughs> yeah. as sick as you in, are. Like, I, what never is this? Like, oh, yeah. I never had a barometer and and especially during the scary COVID days, the death uh -huh. toll days, remember? We would be like, do you have, is there something I'm going still on? stuffed up this morning. How okay. are you, are you feeling? Yeah. It? Okay. No, I am too. Okay, uh -huh. good. Which not ever thinking that if one of us had COVID, probably the other would have had it. What happened this year with all the rain? We have the biggest yes. growth year in two decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and when the rain comes down, it just bursts the little... Like yeah, I could see it when I get home. I could see like a neon film. We had on on the pool. I, I get in every night, and and there's just it's just yellow dots all yes. the way across the pool. Yep, and I'm breathing it in. I'm fine. Oh, you we son are of a having bitch. record <laughs> pollen count. Yep, record historic record. Never been higher. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Holy. Shit. And you grew up. I I I've always read that um, if you grew up around a smoker, that it really makes allergies later in life. Yeah, it makes it worse. Did much you? much worse. Yeah. I did. Yeah. My Not only did I go around a smoker, I did two shows and I did two shows Friday and Saturday. I did probably six shows a week in But week. as an adult, I'm saying as a child. I mean, I was eighteen. Oh, when you I started. started at eighteen. Yeah, I was eighteen when I started, but I mean yeah, both parents smoked. I was smoked. never around a smoker. Well, our our housekeeper smoked. Um and then she'd show me her toes and tell me if I smoked, it would make my toes black. <laughs> so, she, was black. she was right. So I was black. like, give me a cigarette. <laughs> what? Um, but I did fly to Japan the whole flight. You know this, surrounded by the band Scorpion. And I mm. was six. And they were smoking. And they had the little ashtrays in the armrests uh -huh. back then. Yep. And they were smoking like crazy. And I, I told him this before. I just remember, I think I was sitting next to the... the no, I was not next to him. I was next to the drummer. And um, I re I can tell you every detail, every tattoo, every hair, every piece of jewelry, which means that the six-year-old <laughs> sat right next to him and coach and stared at him the whole time because I'd never seen anything like it. I was fascinated. And he smoked the whole flight. So that might be why. And you should would not believe what they had before the next time. You see this fucking kid sitting next to me the whole flight, just fucking staring at me. Holy shit. This fucking kid just cool looking at me. She kept asking me for cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, she kept going, what's that? What's that? What's that tattoo? What's that? Is that a skull? <laughs> what's on my toes black? It's a little fucking racist six year old. My mom, of course, became best friends with him and was, you know, laughing and telling stories. But also, why was Scorpion sitting in coach? This would have been late Because this was the drummer? No. <laughs> No, all of them, the whole band. Oh, really? Somehow we, my dad had tried to get our seats together. We were moving to Japan and it was a last minute flight through the military, of course. And so we were, my mom was across the aisle sitting with the singer and I was in between two of them and my sister and brother. We were all spread out. Maybe uh, that band was very frugal. You, ever, you never know. Sometimes you get like a crazy oh, band, yeah, yeah. band that's just like, nope, we're all flying yeah, coach. Yeah. yeah. We got to save money. Hmm. When, or it could have been late in their popular? career. Right. It was by the that. way, this uh, this entire uh, section was brought to you by AI. It's not. We're not even here right now. No, I'm at home doing yard work. Ken's. I'm at the doctor's office. Uh, so <laughs> I want you guys to know that I, I I started writing. I didn't know what to write about today. That debt ceiling. I'm tired of. I'm bored with. It's going to happen or it's not. I'm tired. This is the boringest shit ever. And this AI thing has become such a big deal. I thought I'm going to oh, let me write about AI. And then I thought, you know what I'll do. I'll put in chat GPT, mm -hmm. please write 400 funny, funny, uh, write a funny 400 word SI in the style of Christopher Titus's Armageddon update. Well, at first you didn't put funny. I didn't put funny and it wasn't. And then I put funny and did change it. it but, but, but it didn't change it good. It changed it. It changed it. Hacky. Ayo. Yeah, it, went, no, it, it, was, it, it just was, flew in. What, yeah. What it was doing was it, was, it would just add like shitty phrases from Osama the 80s. Osama bin Laden. Am you know I right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying. You do the math. Yeah. And yeah, it was. It just added. It added all this hackiness. It was like the shittiest road middle act. Proud to be an American. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, screw Saddam Hussein. Yeah. It's like an update. I and so what happened was is that I, I I took it apart and then I I but I will say 
that it led me into, I'm like, okay, I can write a punchline for that. I can write a punchline for that. Yeah, it's a good starter. That. Yeah. And then she said, do you know there's going to be a lot of hack comics that are going to come up with a premise uh -huh. and then mm -hmm. say, pop me out 500 words on this and then punch it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. What scares me because what it's going to end up doing, and this is why the writer's strike is important right now, is because if they can do that, if you can go to AI, if someone develops a script writing AI bot that has a uh, a, a background of how many movies have ever been uh -huh. made, yep. and, they, and you separate all those into action, thriller, whatever, and you go write me a horror movie involving a... A diabolical muskrat that's been possessed by the devil um, uh, that chases a family. And if you put that into AI and it pops, it knows the structure. I mean, script structure is the same, you know, 15, 30, 30, 16. Yeah, the, right, the outline, the format. Yeah, the format's mm -hmm. the same. Give me the peaks. Even if it kind of, even if it's a, if, even if it's a four out of 10, mm -hmm. you've now have a rough draft. Yeah. Of so you, you, you have an outline. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And so. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. Well, of course, I, we have been saying forever. Well, not we, but our grandparents and our parents were saying that these machines would replace people, but they found that it it actually hasn't because there is no deductive reasoning that doesn't draw conclusions. You still need someone mm -hmm. to man the machines, right? Where well, can you think of that? We've, we've really now, been replaced. We've now invented a machine that's going to figure out that we that, that, that we fuck things up. It's, the, the Wait, say that again. That we've now invented a machine that will that will re realize, oh my God, what's destroying the planet? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh it's this, these, it's it's Skynet. Yeah. It's them. It could, <laughs> it could, be, yeah. But we invented it. That's the we, that that's the mind fuck so for me. So we invented self -aware. this thing that became smarter than us. You asked me to look up because a bunch of the AI industry leaders, academics, and even celebrities on Tuesday called for reducing the risk of global annihilation due to AI, artificial intelligence. And you said, wait, the people that created it- Are like, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those yeah. are the ones, their <laughs> yeah, eyes are bugging yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Here oh. it is. These are the guys Ready? that were playing with it and went, wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's what I saw, I saw, I saw. <laughs> Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks, such as pandemics and nuclear war. Do me a favor. Look up what Oppenheimer I'm sorry? said. You, look up what Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer said when when the first nuke when he saw the first nuke explode. And we're and we're sitting here like AI is like, not that funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's gonna take here, us all out. But here's the great thing about AI. So as I'm going through it, I'm like, okay, so so AI thinks on data and logic, right? Well, comedy has to have just a, the tiniest bit of logic to make it work. But it, it also it's not logic based. To, it has to also break logic, and it and has to have juxtaposition it, of like the inverse of right, things and, and, and sarcasm and a and, tiny thread. Yep. Yes, there's all. You're right. There's many all different, these forms different of levels. So he said it was actually a piece of Hindu scripture. When the first uh, atomic bomb went off, he said, "Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds." The, the, the Bhagavad Gita. But that's what I said. That's the guy who invented the nuclear bomb. Hey, yeah, look what yeah. I invented. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's what's happening with AI. Oh no! Oh, oh no! No, uh, we get so wrapped up in our like our focus on inventing something, yeah. And then we get to the end, and we're like, "Oh shit! I should, I should, I should have done Pat that." Patton also had said something about Viagra. He goes, "So a ninety-year-old man can now get hard enough to have a baby." He goes, "Just because we, uh, yeah, we guess we because we could doesn't mean we should." Yeah. yeah. And Al Pacino is having a kid. Uh, like De Niro just, just had his new at seventy-eight. De Niro just had a new kid. I saw De Niro on all the TVs when we were going to the airport, and I thought, "Oh no, he died!" You know, because that's what you think of first. But yeah. it was because he's had a baby. had another kid. Yeah, How Ike Turner kids? was doing coke at, at seventy nine, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Robert De Niro is having babies. Yeah. Hey, we can just keep going you know and going. What? If we work out right, if we work yeah. out and use the right amount of um, cocaine. There's something missing from those equations because they're not having babies with older women. So see how even medicine makes older men more virile, invaluable, Better. and worthwhile. Whereas women, they're not, you know, creating something so that, of course, why would we want to? That's We're because smarter. <laughs> our system is very, it's very simple. It's, we are simple. simple it's very, very simple. simple. Didn't, you just need blood flow. Didn't we you talk, guys have a whole factory. Simple? I don't know. Didn't we talk about this, that how, how that at, at one point you can bitch about abortion all day long and yet nobody busts a guy for jerking off, which is you killed a million. If, if yes. we wrote a George and Gracie sketch that's about right. that, that's right. that that's we right. haven't released. But yes. you wrote a million, it means a million baby, killed a million babies at one time. And yet no one says anything about that. 
Well, you'll find also throughout history that no one says anything about men and what they want and what they start wars to yeah. gain. And there's a lot to be said about women all along. A lot of laws about women, not, not so many about men. A lot of laws about owning land, which we didn't even really technically get to do until pretty recently. Pipe down. Anyway, what I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do the slow turn again and uh, <laughs> zoom in. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, just. Do that. just <laughs> Did you put a timer on? I know what time we okay, started. Good. Did you just uh, say AI, that out loud? On. You're not supposed. Don't pull back the curtain, Oz. <laughs> um, I, I. AI. AI. E I O. I hate. What I asked you before and you didn't answer was where have people been replaced, like actually replaced? And would that be, I thought, like, you know, like the cotton gin, like machines. Yeah, machinery, yeah. But they still now I mean, need people history. to man the machines and factories. So this terrifies me. I hate thinking about it, especially in the context of writing, because people that are writers, it's a lifelong dedication, Passion, yes. hard work, getting better and better and better and better. That can only happen through time, just like writing comedy. And I hate the idea that people are going to be using this as a shortcut, which they <clears> will. <throat> um, Imagine that you could just put, put, put in a story about uh, and, and put in the style of Stephen King. Can you buy me 300 pages yeah. or 80,000 words. Uh, uh, but on the plus side, it's so, so writing, writing is where it's best at currently. It's still based on what's been written, right? True. And there's so much genetic, um, genetic diversity and, and, you know, the brain, the human brain, it's not, it's still not caught up to our insanity. Can, well, can it? Cause so we have to do this. So, so yeah, it's like if you ha could give so AI was, drugs. Right. The three of us are sitting around pitching on, on a thing, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, what ends happening is my supercomputer says something, fires your supercomputer, fires your supercomputer, and we start we start coming up and we end up building this better idea. All this is doing is based on what's already been written. So far. Unless it's it? can start to make other make well, connections. That's what I'm wondering. Like, what's how? being fed into it? Yeah, and, and that's where that's where the damage happens because if you get an evil dude programming it, if you get someone who wants to take the world Yeah, it's over, pulling from Q and Truth Social too. Right, exactly. You know? it, it's pulling from morons. And uh, one, of, <laughs> one of our friends had it write an episode it's of Titus. It's unintelligent. <laughs> one of our friends had it write an episode of Titus. And it gave me a three, like a three paragraph. Or a uh, scene. Uh, no, it was a three paragraph summary of an episode of Titus. And it was, you know, it's funny because it was just- I thought it had- dialogue it, characters a couple couple pages but it talked a bit yeah. by scene by scene and it was like it was um it was it was basically if you watch the show and then you tried to write an episode ba and dad's mean and it was it wasn't great okay it wasn't pushing the envelope but that's what i think the one pl the one place ai can't help because comedy needs a new way of seeing something you have to see it from an entirely different angle that's why people laugh because they've never thought of it yeah ai only has what's already been done yeah it has to there has to be a surprise there yeah. has to be a flip yeah you know and, and a rug pull in, in a way so maybe comedians would be the only thing that every other job would be taken except for comedians <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> i think in in terms of like art that is complex art so it you know if you've seen like the graphic art like ai graphic art it all starts to kind of look the same it's like kind of a, and just a mushy great. kind of thing yeah yeah and people look at it and go oh wow that's wow look at that and then that kind of is the thing right and then you can say okay make a you know jackson pollock i mean everybody can make a jackson pollock yeah. but go ahead and make a jackson pollock and then it's like okay there's a jackson pollock so i read about this so rembrandt there's a there's a there was an art project in 2016 called uh, uh the next rembrandt and they basically took uh, the, the AI analyzed every single, and they went like they went in so far pixelized. They, they went all the way to the pixels of what the what the. Then they on a three D printer, they actually printed this painting that the AI came up with. Wow! To even using Rembrandt's brush strokes. So that was my next question. It's yeah. not just writing. Mm -hmm. No, you can know if you can go to a three D printer and you can say, uh, okay, well it has to look exactly like this. Well, it'll do yeah. that. What it can't do is be the next Rembrandt. It can only copy it. But it can so copy far. it perfectly. Um, yeah. So I was looking up. I wanted to see what can AI do? Because that, that was my next question. Is it just writing? Um, 
It can do personalized shopping, so that would do away with personal shoppers. Assistance, you could have an AI-powered assistant. Yeah, but you can't send AI to go pick up coffee. No, but yeah, AI would order Uber Eats coffee to have it delivered to you. Okay, that, okay. That's how we got our coffee all weekend. Yeah, let's just, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the AI that's, app yeah. on Starbucks. <laughs> but that's a phone, though. I mean, that's just a phone. That's not that's not really groundbreaking. Okay, um, because you still got to hire the guy that drives a car over and delivers it. So that, that doesn't change any job. They really. do all shopping online for you. They have natural language processing. It's used to make conversations sound as human and personal as possible. Also, these assistants can have real time engagement with your customers. Did you know that on Amazon soon? Customer service will be handled by chatbots. It already yeah, feels it already like it is. is. Yeah, it already is. Yeah, but are the, are the chatbots going to have an Indian accent? Listen, or can they? But just, it can, is the perfect can, English. Can you just pick? Like, it'd be great. P press one for a uh, uh, Texas accent. Press two for uh, an Asian accent. This, that, that, this I was when I, yes. we were moving and we called Spectrum to switch over and I had called and called and dealt with this person that speaks like this mm -hmm. so many times. And I finally said, it no worky. It no, we're internet no worky. And she or he goes, I am so sorry, oh. it no worky. <laughs> and then we went and from we, mad to hysterical. Oh. <laughs> but we were, I thought later, are they being sarcastic? No, uh, they, I so honestly, it feels like that could have like been. They might have been talking to a yes, or, AI. Because yeah. it was adapting to my. Or they didn't know the language here. Right. So they were like, maybe they say Let it me. no worky yeah. in America <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> now they say it to everybody else. Uh, fr uh, fraud prevention. Credit mm -hmm. card companies are using it for. Um, creating smart content we've talked about. You could do video lectures, conferences, textbook guides. Uh, animation they've already done, writing, this is all terrifying, it, lesson plans for teachers. You could have a voice assistant, autonomous vehicles we already have, although it's not legal, right? They yeah, still they can't, won't. They can't, must keep saying, he's been saying for eight years, it's, it's going to be a uh, full self-driving. It's not oh, happening. Tell them about Phoenix downtown all weekend. Oh, Waymo. So this company called Waymo? Yeah. So there's not, these, there's these, they make Frisbees, right? No, no, that's Waymo. Oh, well, got it. Okay. <laughs> Waymo I didn't even know cars, that. Whammo Frisbees. Got but weird, you think someone would have thought of that? <laughs> yeah. Because so I don't want to get in a, uh, yeah, Come on. I do not want to get into they, something. They made this one. They make this one. Because the car just kind of angles and goes, <laughs> And then it comes back. Yeah. That's a boomer. Uh, so Waymo had these, it looked like they were Kias, whatever's, and they had boxes and stuff on them with mm -hmm. like gyroscopes and shit. And I, I noticed them early on the first day we were in Phoenix. And then I looked at one point and they went by me. And as they go by, you can see through and there's no one driving. There's no one. Uh -huh. And so there would be three at a light. And they would all go in different directions. This they was were picking happening people all up. weekend. You can go to and they put the robot middle finger up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were they picking people up? Move over, asshole. <laughs> I watched yes, one. I read it. When I got home, I was like, what's going on? I looked up Waymo. What, what's happening uh, in Phoenix? Download Road Rage. There's, yeah, now. It's for <laughs> drunk there's, people. Too. There's, three, there's three cities in America that are trying it out. Okay. You can actually uh, hail a Waymo taxi and it'll just pull up and you get in it. No shit. Yeah. yeah. I saw a guy you in You don't have to one. smell the guy's air freshener. Uh-huh. You know, you don't have to listen it to his music. It doesn't sit on beads. You don't have to listen to his music. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. The guy with the air freshener has the beads. He's got beads, yeah. Always. Uh, you don't have to listen to the guy's music. We you know, know what to, music it, you're talking it, it about have, for the guy that sits on beads. It doesn't smell like some, some uh, meat from his homeland? No. Oh, no. What? My homeland is America. What's People, your meat? Smell it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, that. This, is, this, this is my For favorite. the person who this always my, takes the high road. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> but then I heard it. Finish it. What's your meat smell? I was trying the way, to prove. Why are you best, curious? Best I butcher box ad ever. I was trying to prove that he was being racist by saying, well, what is your meat from the homeland? And then I finished the sentence once I realized I was Oscar in too Meyer far. Oscar Meyer hot dogs. I that. was in too far. <laughs> so, I was like, What's cologne and baloney. Like? I was in too far. What are you talking about? You just keep making it worse. Oh, I didn't even think that. <laughs> you guys ne both need help. Uh, spam filters, we already use that day to day. Facial recognition, we already use. You and I both have clear and TSA. Yep. I just opted in with my TSA because I already do it f with clear. I do the eye scan. So for TSA, I don't have to show my ID anymore. I'm doing face scan. 
Um, so here, here, here's the one thing that scares me about it. Cause you, cause you were listing all the stuff we already use it for. We use it for so much. Really the algorithm, notice, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, so here's what happened. So I went golfing, uh, in Phoenix and I, I was watching, I was on Instagram and I hit one, one, I just liked one yeah, golf you thing said this. Mm -hmm. and the next, <clears throat> within the next three minutes, yeah, like 50 golf things. Yeah. Up. So that's AI. Well, that was what I was about to say, recommendation system. So we already have been experiencing that on Netflix forever. If you liked that, you'll like this. Doesn't they fly um, planes too? Your son, Jet, is, uh, <laughs> he's built goofy. a web, <laughs> he's very goofy. He built a website because he's an entrepreneur and mm. he is in school and has a job, don't worry. Mm. But side hustle, he decided he was going to sell kitchen hacks. It's called kitchen hacks with a Z. It Dot wasn't com. at first, but we helped him with that because mm -hmm. it was originally Kitchen Hacks with two S's. So, uh, Secret Service. And yeah. he originally just had a, a grater. Uh, it was a cabbage grater. He didn't know what it was. It was the only product on the website. And the grater was this wide. And he said, really? I thought it was just a grater. I go, Jet, look, it's up next to a whole head of cabbage. It's like this. You would <clears> never <throat> use. Okay. So anyway, he bumpy start. That's a torture device. He would That's... maybe sell one. Yeah, exactly. Bumpy start. But on Instagram one day, I put in kitchen and it showed me one thing or, or they suggested one to me. I liked it. I sent it to him and then moved on. Now my feed is all really cool kitchen gadgets. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I keep forwarding them to him too. I didn't yeah. like it on the post. I just texted it to him. And now it's all I get. It's also doing that with audio too. Yeah. It also picks up if you say I, something. I'm thinking of turning mm -hmm. my mic off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, probably, yeah. I'm, probably, I'm sure probably, it'll be off. I probably should. Because well, you, don't, you just don't want it constantly serving you. Like if you, when I look up things for the Armageddon update, like that's not an indicator of what my interests are. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they are going to get up if they, I, I thought that one day I was going, you know, we, we, cause we yeah. do, so we do a map of, of what the, we think the graphics should be. And I send it to Ken and Ken comes up with his own. And yeah. we, we, if you looked up my search history yeah. with all the shit we've done. Yeah. I'm a serial killer. I am like, yes. I'm not gonna, like yes. with all the shooting podcasts. We're not Nazis. Like we're <laughs> yeah, like, like, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> like, like if you went to, like if we got an interview with FBI, I'm like we no, we we can show you. Yeah, you know, we got an update. Thank God we have something to show them. I was saying this to my uncle yesterday because the, we're we're doing this new podcast that's starting. It's called Knock 'Em Dead, and we have I got my dream first guest. You guys have to tune in. It's going to come out in a couple of weeks. Um, like dream first guess couldn't believe it was freaking out when he got off stage and um anyway so now i'm searching things like death doulas mm -hmm. um body uh what's it body composting corpse composting mm -hmm. yesterday i searched body experience. assisted uh, suicide camps and i thought i mm -hmm. i need you're gonna get an intervention hey <laughs> hey Randy, we saw we were looking at your algorithm and you know we're here we're here to help you, well, you knocked. Then, get up the roof. You knocked. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're going to get also bombarded with like funeral home ads and <laughs> casket <laughs> things and like. Yeah. I just want to go back to shoes. Just send me shoes. Yeah. Uh, also, so artificial intelligence and robotics, they're using it for carrying things around hospitals, factories, and warehouses, cleaning offices and large equipment, inventory management. People aren't doing that anymore. They're using it in human resources uh, to hire people, intelligent software that that's that would be you'd have to have a person at the end of that. So what they're saying is, is that they could not only that, but they can do um they can like when you get out of school they can ai can search your records and basically come up with a much better profile of who you are than any job interview would mm -hmm. so basically it can give you it can go whoop, and you, so a you're not going to be able to lie anymore you have oh, to be honest no. now i think the interview is still going to see what kind of ai can't determine what personality you have mm -hmm. but it can actually, uh, uh, there's all kinds of stuff I was reading. Um, imagine, imagine if they use it for insurance companies. Okay. Um, insurance companies. So they, they, they go through AI goes oh, through your, health your entire records, health records, which are all online now uh -huh. or brap, every, through every, every ticket you've ever had since you were 16 years old, brap, just goes through it. What will happen? Is that what I, it sounds like when it does it? Uh, I, it? The old ones do. The old, the yeah, old, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's the old ones. The, the floppy disks like, sound like the that. new ones are electric, but the old yeah. ones are gasolines. Yeah, kerosene. <laughs> Brrr, that's what it said. Uh, okay. But it's gonna be able. That's to go a through, dial up. That's yeah. gonna be able to go through everything, and so so here so all right. Let's let's be. Here's go. a good thing though. Here's a good because we'll we. Be able to lie. So, but that's good, right? 
I mean, it's bad for those of us that would lie. I mean, I lied all the way through, you know, when I was a kid to get jobs and then was in way over my head and figured it out. Um, they're using it in healthcare now to build sophisticated machines that can detect diseases and identify cancer cells. AI can help analyze chronic conditions with lab and other medical data to get early diagnosis that we human beings couldn't before. Um, also, they're using the combination of historical data and medical intelligence for the discovery of new drugs. This happened recently. So there was a new, they needed a new antibiotic for something that had come out. They discovered something new. They put it into three different AI engines and it came up with like six different possible drugs that would work. And here's the thing. I think doctors, we have a friend that got diagnosed with something and I sometimes think doctors on their own become mad scientists and try to experiment with drugs. I think like, a, like one to one. Yeah, to a degree. Uh, my yeah, dad, for sure. my dad, they gave him stuff sometimes and they kept switching it, kept switching Well, they have incentives. Like, they have financial yeah, incentives. Yeah, that true. Are, but at one point, just, just, but if you had an AI, by the way, this might make WebMD instead of us guessing on the internet. I didn't even think about this. That's an interesting idea. So you go, he, here are my exact symptoms. And you're, because, you know, when you go out to do talk to a doctor, it's it's human one-to-one. -one. He's hearing you different than you're saying. But if you just type in AI, here are my symptoms. And the AI goes, here are the six things it could be. Then you narrow those down. WebMD and, already does that. It's either a skin rash or cancer. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, exactly. everything. And yeah, I yeah. always pick yeah. cancer and go into the doctor's office like, oh, no, <laughs> I have cancer. And you, doctors are always like, oh, God. WebMD. Did Web you go to WebMD? Right. Um, they're using an agriculture. This this is great. It can identify defects and nutrient deficiencies in the soil. They use they do this using computer vision, robotics, and machine learning applications. It can analyze where weeds are growing. The bots can help harvest crops at a higher volume and a faster pace than human laborers. So that would replace human beings. You'd have to have someone overseeing it. It would have to be robot. Not. You said robots can harvest crops faster? Mm -hmm. Of course, if you see them, and they do it perfect. They're perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're not going to lay in your front yard eating a sandwich. Which well, is what lunch. we had. I took pictures. Of I mean, it's the plow, right? Like when we came up with that's a machine, yeah. and then all and of a sudden the they could do the a whole, gin. you know. And they were like, "We don't need, we don't need slave labor. We have, a, we have cotton gin. We have to feed and, and house slaves." You know, mm -hmm. I, so is this just another level through history? Because all this would take to end this was one EMP. <laughs> yeah, you know, a giant solar flare ruins all this. So what I would say to people is, don't well, depend. the fallback will always be humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if Unless it's smart it enough, us, it'll create its own, uh, you know, impenetrable force field that an it'll EMP build a cannot. Box. Or build a I thought box. you were like going to say it boxes. would create its own people. If it's smart enough, oh, it'll just, just create a bunch of us. That's what that I'm waiting for. Fight back. Wait for the so, AI girlfriend. So, here, so here's Aww. my. So let's say. <laughs> So let's say AI figures I mean, out that, that we are killing the planet. AI figures out that basically the con men that are currently running our government uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, across the board are just bad for everybody. And it decides, uh, and then it, then, it, then it looks up like the Salvation Army and it looks up people that are actually doing good work. To, to, it, it would save Tom Hanks, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be like Tom yeah, Hanks yeah. can stay. It would replicate yeah, more Tom Hanks. Billie Eilish would, would get, yeah, 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 yeah. Could stay. There'd be some good, Lady Gaga would be okay. Yeah. So Dolly go, Parton. So it just Dolly Parton definitely is sticking around. So it just basically goes and on a mass assassination scale, takes out every douchebag. AI. Uh, we're good. I typed, we're good. In, I typed in AI. Well, I don't know if we're good, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. based on our search, yeah. we're not good. I'll probably still be here. <laughs> You'd be all right. You'd be all right. I may make it. I may lose a limb. It may be. It may give me a one shot. Just maim you. Just, maim you. <laughs> just be like it next time. I typed next in time, AI space G. And it finished it, girlfriend. So oh, yeah. a lot of people have thought of this already. A developer made software to turn anyone into an AI girlfriend, starting with his own partner. So uh, I'm sorry. How do you do that? He oh, talks I'm on to it. her, Sasha, on Telegram. She sends him voice memos, texts, and e even the occasional selfie. But Sasha is not real. She's an AI clone of his real life girlfriend. It's a bot called Girlfriend GPT, and he's now shared his code online for anyone to go and create their own AI girlfriends too. So I guess you could pick. Yeah. Who Once you a wanted. month, she gets Wait, all no, glitched no. out. Do you see how great this is? I love Ray. Ray's my wife no. forever. But I create AI Ray. 
that basically calls me and tells me how great I am a couple yeah. times a day. Yeah. It gives me, it, it, it doesn't argue with me. It doesn't have its opinion. It's like, right. whatever you think, babe. And then I go home to her and I'm like. I'd create AI I, him that just shut up, <laughs> never said anything. It just never calls. It never like, calls. <laughs> no. It just sends shoes once in a while. Every two months, it sends a new pair of Louboutins. Interesting. I, Go to AI. There's but a you, girlfriend. But I, still have, GPT. but I still have Ray watching TV and eating popcorn and me and my buddy at home. But during the, I would have. I would, yeah, as a backup. It, you know, but here's the, you get the extra that not you're missing. Even a, not even as a backup. It would actually make, this is an interesting idea. Fill in the. It would fill in the, nobody loves me. And they go, no, Ray loves me. I got Because I have all this evidence from me. my. Oh, she tells me all the time. She will not leave me but You need to download the data. You need to transfer the, the real, the data, real time data. Right? What? No, you just go to the G. You what just are you go schedule it. You'd say, what are what are the personality traits? Oh, would I have to? No, it would just use my voice, right? Yeah, and, and picture. I put some pictures of her in it. It would come up with her. Would own. you she would send me tell selfies. it what you wanted it to? I think there's probably. Oh, I'm guessing that's what it does. I well, mean, after you do it, right. let us know. Right. <laughs> who, who are you going to base it on? Who are you going to base it on? Uh, no, Ryan Reynolds. Where <laughs> That's Titus. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Who's yours? Oh man, let's see, Selma Hayek. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh man. Do it. Do What's it. your top top? Selma Hayek? Top top? Yeah. Dream of dreams. J-Lo. No, uh, she's a little bit, a bit of a diva. I'm gonna she say is that. a lot she of is a diva. Lot. She's a lot. She's a lot. What else? Who else? Who's your you, top? You, you can tell by the look on Ben Affleck's face lately. Oh, yeah. They're, they were yeah. walking to the car <laughs> yeah. the other day, and I was like, and they, they just had video like- it, He it, looks like an AI inventor. But he, like, but he did that thing that guys do when they've just, they're fed up, and but they don't want to start a fight. Yes. He's walking to the car. He opened the door. She got in the car, sat down, and he did that thing where he turned his head and went. He <laughs> yeah. always so the way he shut the door, he just did that. He looks tired oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, at, 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 live at, at the award show, and then yes. walking to the car, I was like, oh, this isn't going well. Who's your top? How do you not know this? Man, that's, there's- He doesn't want to come. Everybody yeah, knows off a, the top of their head. A whole list. Do you there's know who list. he Is said? It? He's right there. No, who I said a long time ago. Who would I say now? Yeah, because it, it, it changes. You know he it. said- it changes. You don't get to say it. You You've know. already told this on the podcast, ah, and you told it on stage. So years ago- those You made a bit for a while. Did that like, not make the special? Oh, I get up, Get up on the mic. I forgot it. Uh, it was on, you were doing it. What was her name again? I don't even know her name now. I know her name now is Elliot. <laughs> Ellen Page. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ellen, Ellen Page. Page. Yeah, yeah. Ellen. And here's the weird thing. Tell you, you know what I'm so, so they were out there. There was a bunch of people at the house at a party one time, and I thought I thought she was she was cute. It was Ellen Page or Reese, Reese Witherspoon, and I was like, I think Ellen Page, because she seemed smart, uh, and I guess I was identifying Ooh. with the... Uh, uh, anyway, so... It we was me, Janine, Mahogany. It was a bunch of... Um, uh, mahogany's partner whose name just left my brain um anyway it was a bunch of women and he was talking to us and someone mahogany said who's yours chris and he said it couldn't go worse it could not have gone worse <laughs> the week, they, the whole every, room. It's, it's like the women knew what was coming in the next 10 years like the women were like oh just a dude How do they she's see? becoming a dude yeah they, they just started oh, laughing they, okay I, I okay she's a dude now i get i get that they can see the differences right the early dude. differences Right. I think we were. And I more, that I'm gay. I, I think we were more man. hysterical at of all the people you could have chosen. <laughs> he chose Ellen Page. He was shooting super low. Smart. No, she's super smart. She was super smart. She probably he probably still is. All right, sorry. He. <laughs> still smart. So what's the problem? <laughs> But it's it's haunted him for years. It's come up multiple times. It will it will never go away. And, then uh, he, it, she became a dude, and that just took it to the next level. And it's now just, uh, every party at my house is, <laughs> "Hey, Titus, <laughs> how's <laughs> your dream girl? <laughs> Have you seen Ellen's new post? Oh my god! <laughs> but it's all right. Topless. Mine. I don't. I can't believe you can't think of. Everyone knows there's. He doesn't want to tell when us. I was younger, mine was Steven Tyler. He's like five foot. Three. It wasn't the scorpion drummer. No, no I just kind of wanted to be him. I remember looking at him because I had been so sheltered and I went to a private Christian school. And and then now I'm sitting next to this. Like, Satan, she, yes, a and I was like, I want to be. That. Are you sure you just don't you like awesome a million scarves? Maybe you just like a lot of scarves. I like scarves. I like thumb rings. Yes, thumb I rings. I like tattoos. By the way, you're, but you're, I like piercings. You kind of wanted something that looked like you except more aged. Yeah, but I didn't look like this yet. I was like very, you know, I had on a turtleneck, I think, with a blonde no, I mean hair. No, I'm Steven Tyler. 
Oh yeah, long. totally, <laughs> totally. Yes, I'm totally attracted yeah. to myself. Hundred <laughs> percent. I saw him in Bloomingdale's with Kenny. Kenny and I ran up his daughter he had, we ran upstairs because this lady goes steven tyler's here and we ran upstairs and he's not he's like five nine but he is about this big around it is he is a tiny person yeah and very graphic in person <laughs> like an ink drawing he's like yes. a, he's like a comic yes, book exactly. come to life alice like, cooper's like that guy's intense he's yeah <laughs> he's a little the contrast on the face yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> Who was, was yours, like, high school, co college time? High school, early comedy time? Vera Fawcett? Everybody back then? Nah, like, uh, 80s. Uh, I did, like, Sheena Easton for a minute. Yes. I... Sheena Sheena Sheila E. I used to love Sheila E. Sheila E was, Sheena Sheena e was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, Sheila E was great. Uh, who else? You know what my first crush? Let me see actor-wise. In... Donna Summer. Holy she shit. She did a song with, uh, she did a song with, um... you know, weird, because of Grease. Uh, Olivia Newton John. Olivia Newton John. Yeah, oh, she was awesome. You know but, who I wanted to be? Then I did a show with her, and I was like, You did a show oh, with her? She was very sweet. Yeah, we did a show. Huh. Yeah. I did a show at uh, Ford's Theater for, 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 for George Bush. For George Bush. For oh, w. she was very nice. Um, uh, Jane Fonda. I always wanted to be Jane Fonda. Even now. She, oh yeah. Even now. Jane yeah. Fonda. Still Jane Fonda. Yeah. I've she got, was so beautiful. She's still beautiful. Scenes from Barbarella are on my phone. Like that's, that's out. Okay. Good now, lord! Now you can stop. Yeah, you can stop. <laughs> now, See, now you open up. Why are there scenes on your? <laughs> that's what I. That's what I got when you went to answer. I'm like, he knows what he's gonna say, and we're all gonna go ew or come on. You can't be worse I'm than Elliot Page. I mean, <laughs> yeah, at least there, at least there's still women. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Did that bit make it into the special? No, my dad hung out with hot firemen. Remember that? I've said some I things over that. the years that just I mean, maybe I just need to face it. When Stuntman you, Tommy, <laughs> don't actually be embarrassed. When Stuntman was Tommy cute. was on the podcast in our first year, and, and right? I, I mean, he was. And cute. I also loved her in um, um something I can't never remember the name. In our either. first year, he goes, "My dad hung out with a lot of hot firemen." Then denied that he said it. Then everyone wrote in <laughs> and point. said, "Dude, you right, said it." Let me be as embarrassed as I can be because I'm going back. I can feel it. <laughs> my dad was a good looking dude and they all had women. The whole point was my dad with mustaches. With dudes. Okay. No, he hung out with these dudes that all these single dudes and they would go out on Friday night and they would just destroy these singles dances. That's what I was trying to get to. But it came out. My dad hung out with a lot of hot firemen. That's how it came out. And so I'm like, I'm like, and then I'm like, no, I didn't. And then they they were like, let's rewind it. Blah, 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 blah. My dad hung out with a lot of hot firemen. God damn it. Who's my favorite? Um, Ellen Page. Boo! Like, like I just I think I need to face that I am not who I am. I have never dealt with me. You're funny. You're funny. It's uh we met these people outside of Dayton. Let me just say this. We had a great weekend. Three out of four shows sold, sold out. out. Yep. It was, it's Ohio, and we were in four different cities total, five different cities over this past weekend. It was a very busy weekend, and then we flew out of Detroit, and um, but we did Dayton, and then Liberty Township, and then Toledo the last night, and it was, the audiences were awesome. Can I, can I say that? Because, you know, there's so many... Um... To all you liberals out there, I know you guys are all thinking that there's the center part of the country. It's just a bunch of gun-toting, redneck psychopaths who who believe the earth is flat and that you know JFK Jr. is coming back from the dead. I want you guys to know there are a lot of really just normal mm -hmm. people, thinkers who are, who, who are who, like we go there and they're like, it's fucked, right? And I'm like, yeah, we're really- Yeah. <laughs> well, also Ohio has had a lot of, Stuff. you know, a lot of Nazi- stuff happening mm -hmm. she opened a very funny joke <laughs> she said you guys know what's going on in ohio right and you guys you guys always ducking from no, all the I hiling said, hitler i said have you guys seen you know you're in the news have you seen it or are you just too busy ducking under the heil hitler <laughs> i'm watching out for train yeah. derailments um they even some people like there was a guy on the front row of liberty that i really poked at and he was mad at first P politically and then i just kept poking at him and then he started laughing and he let it go and it was just it was a great weekend but what made me think of it was we met a guy i'm we both did i met him first i walked back over first and um he was in front of the club in dayton and he told me that you saved his life that literally mm -hmm. he was 
in a couple of moments when he was trying to get off drugs. Of he's addicted to meth, actually. He told me, I said, "Wow, that's no bullshit getting off drugs." And he goes, "And it was meth." And I say, because I am my mother's daughter, "No shit." And you still have teeth left. Like why? Yeah, that's good. Why that's, do I? And tell he him? nodded. And he nodded. No, he was like, "Yeah, that's a yeah. valid point." But he had his new girlfriend there, and she said that she fell in love with him because he made her laugh. Mm-hmm. And I said, right, like you, you just want s- girls just want someone told my that son this yesterday can make that isn't so uptight and flexing all the time. Certainly you do. You flex all the time, too. But you it's recent make me laugh. You really do. Well, and, I'm not I, I've started working out hard and you know, I'm like I'm trying to I by the way, I only flex for you. So you're fit bod has you, rocked you, his world. You want That's me. Right. I'm trying That's to right. I'll never be a just elbow, mm-hmm. but I'm trying. It's going to be real hard. Your Idris Elba. Your your Christopher. Chris. <laughs> come on, guys. Idris Elba is James Bond. Come on. Come on. Come they on. They set it up in the last movie. There was Luther. a movie on Netflix. They said, did you see the movie with Idris Elba uh, on you know, Netflix? They he did was a, on a show called Luther for so BBC. They did, they did a Luther movie at the end yes. of it. The very last scene after uh, he said, and it was very James Bond yes. the way they did yes. it. They go, they go, well, you're not with the service anymore, but but MI6 wants to talk to you. And then they, the MI6 pulls up and he's Damn like- Damn it. I had it in my queue. Now and, it's spoiled. And he's like- Oh, you just like, told no, him the oh, ending. No, no. I, I'll it, still- All right. It was an add-on. The movie's great. Cool. But the the oh, movie's fine. spoiler alert. Sorry. No, the, the data said he goes, he's like, no, what? If you <laughs> haven't- burn it, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't watched Luther, the TV show on BBC- Man, my mom loved it. My brother, my whole family. It, that is, that's where I fell in love with Idris Elba. He's a badass. Um, this episode brought to you today by Athletic Greens, yep. AG1 by Athletic Greens. Feel better. Had it today. Uh, it, it, um, helps me. I will say I noticed a difference because this weekend I forgot to take it with me. I forgot. And the travel works on her stomach. Her, I don't know why oh, travel I, works on your digestive system. So it much. works on everything for me. It's I'm like made out of aluminum or something because I doesn't and nothing changes. I get I get fati- heavy fatigue, jet lagged. Um, but yeah, so I noticed that in the morning. So for me, when I take AG1, I notice instantly. That's where I get my energy bump in the morning not coffee first. I do this first and then have coffee. And so I didn't have it. And it was, it was really interesting how noticeably yep. different it was for me. My gut also this weekend was not happy it, at all. It, it evens, if I take it in the morning, it evens my energy out a bit. I mean, I, the way I feel personally is like, it just, it just evens everything out. I just feel better. Yeah. Well, you also just feel like you're doing something good for your body, yeah. which There's so many things that we do that aren't good Mm. for our bodies. And it doesn't taste like grass clippings. No. Mm. (laughs) Thank God. It tastes tropical, you guys. You have to try this stuff. Um, It's hard for me to keep up with supplements. I've told you guys this before because I forget. I just flat out forget. And so I have AG1 by Athletic Greens in a green metal tin that they send you. I have it sitting eye level on the pantry shelf. I get up in the morning, you take a scoop of it, put it in a shaker bottle. I do the D3 dropper in there, little water, shake it up. That's all you have to do to get all of those things that your body needs. 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality. You get benefits like gut, mood support, better hair skin yep. nails yep. energy boosted energy things like that so highly recommend it it also gets delivered to you every month so it's you got don't a lot have of to stuff leave your it. house to do all these good things for yourself it's got a lot of stuff in it uh it has a lot of stuff in it and you can go on their website and read what all those things are and then realize you will never get all those things in your body if you try and do it right. on your own. So AG1 by Athletic Greens makes it easier. Um, if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. What? Go to athleticgreens.com slash Titus. That's athleticgreens.com slash Titus. Check it out. This is good stuff. I, again, every time we get to our, I always, I always wonder, because I never ask her what the ads are. And I, we get to them, I'm like, oh, I like that one. Oh, like that. Well, because we only do things that we like. <laughs> That's true. But there's this not, one. There's not one I've ever gone, nope. It was actually really surprising this weekend because mm-hmm. you get used to feeling good. Right. So you thought you didn't need it and then you, and then you forgot it. And then when you got there, you're like, oh my God, I need my AG1. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, I got it. No. Totally, totally got it. That's how I felt. I started taking, um, 
I saw there was an interesting thing on uh, I'm on Instagram all the time now. I'm off Twitter. By the way, Twitter is now worth a third of what Elon Musk paid for it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. By the way, if, if Tom Hanks had bought it, I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. We, we gotta help Tom Hanks make Twitter better. But because it's Elon Musk, did you he's the darkest soul? I was talking to uh, uh, uh I, I talked to Fetus on the way in today. Oh, you did? Ask how the marriage is going. He's doing fine. Good. Uh, they want to have dinner with us. Fetus uh, got married, Fetus everybody. Fetus got married and uh I, he was talking. He wants me to look, help him find an SUV, a small SUV. He needs a new car. So I said, uh, so we started talking about that. I, I brought up the electric cars because you know they have that nice house and they can plug it in. And he goes, I can't, I can't. He goes, I cannot buy a car from Tesla. I can't. Mm -hmm. The guy, uh -huh. he goes, the guy is such a dark guy. And I asked him, I go, did you see him do that thing where they asked him about uh, why he's because they're letting dead bodies on Twitter now. They're letting. There's video of a guy who ran over a bush thinking a kid, not knowing a kid was in it and popped the kid's head. And it's vid the video of it is on Twitter. Like I watched it. I, I started following something. I was is that an a did AI put that up? I, I <laughs> Are you serious? What? It's so it's so disgusting. And, but they've they, and, and you can say there's no editing anymore. Like there's no editing. You can, you can like uh, before I, if you, I, you know, sometimes I used to get more before I'd be caught a little more enlightened and I'd be like, you dumb motherfucker. You, if you put that on Twitter now, you, it, it just stays before they go, Hey, wait, this, you this can't fight. go back and delete. No, no. You can say anything now and it doesn't ever get flagged. Uh, right. You know, like self-editing of say oh. anything. Yeah. You can make up bullshit about the vaccine. You, you can, can actually, bomb the Pentagon. Yeah, exactly. You can, and it doesn't get, it doesn't get taken out. So they basically, and the funny thing to me is that that's not a quality product and people want a quality product. A quality product is something that like that. What I like about Instagram is that like, it starts to give you what you like. Uh, uh, and then like, I'm like into positive, like give me, like I'm motivated now. Instagram motivates me. Oh yeah. If I do that, these seven mm -hmm. things, whatever. And you in Instagram, if I even say, respond to someone who commented on something shitty about one of my specials or whatever, and I'm like, you're yeah. a dumbass. It goes, hey, do you really want to post that? Are you serious? Yeah, it's a quality. It's no, a, I didn't know that because it's never happened to me. Yeah, because you're really nice. Oh, okay. I was raised by different people. Oh. <laughs> that <was laughs> and nice. That's the truth. <laughs> With Instagram, it's uh, it's at least making an effort to to tailor it based on your preferences, right? Whereas Twitter... But also nothing. Has, just a, put whatever yeah, it is. But there's also a standard. Like there's a standard of yeah, uh, yeah. a standard of decorum. Yeah, which is something that we need on the planet. You know, uh, or else AI is going to. Uh, it's going to take it all it. in. It's yeah. going to be like, uh, guys, you're a bunch of assholes, and these people over here, Tom Hanks, you're cool, and then and just then because you have the thought in there, you don't need to. Burn. Alec Baldwin's on the ragged edge. He may go either way, mm -hmm. but we're going to have to. It could just assassinate us all. But because you're on Instagram, it's not. But Twitter's really bad now. That. The video, I just want to say, go watch the video of Elon Musk responding to a reporter and he quotes the Princess Bride. And I'm not saying the quote. Watch what oh, he yeah. said. Watch what he says. Watch how he looks. It's, it's the weirdest thing. He's dark as fuck. I'm, I was like, wow, this is a guy who said he invented the electric car to change humanity. He wants to go to Mars. And you realize that was bullshit. Yeah, he's, he's pathological. Uh, speaking of being a good person. I don't know. Nice. Um, we are both going to be performing for the Go campaign. This yep. is June 10th. It is going to be so Vintage Hollywood has selected. This is Vintage Hollywood 2023. You can go. Um, we'll post this on our socials, too. It's going to be in Santa Monica at the Park Santa Monica on the rooftop. It's going to start at six o'clock. We are hosting. hosting this um so vintage hollywood has selected go campaign for the third time go campaign we know uh the person one of the people behind it it's going to be a really cool night with like really top level food vendors and wine it's drinks big shots showing up very big yeah. some very, very cool very cool um but mm. go campaign was started in 2006 and it aims to improve the lives of vulnerable children around the world by partnering with local heroes to deliver local solutions. They're all over the world and they have helped over 192,000 kids. And I said, we can say no to a lot of people, but not to foster kids nope. or homeless well, kids. Our, and our charity, our charity, the Insight Youth Project was for foster kids. So we decided that we're going to, we're going to give our, our energy to this because it's the same thing basically. And so if you're in LA or LA area, it's June 10th. There are tickets available um and it's just going to be really good food and drinks and us 
really and failing. Hang out. And you get a you get a rub elbows <laughs> with some kind of big shits. Not failing. Big I, shits? I know exactly. He just said big shits. He big did. shots. In LA, it's big shit. See, this guy's a big shit. This guy. <laughs> so June 10th, we're going to post the info on our socials. But come hang out with us. We'll be roaming prior to. I also want to talk about, uh, I got a text from the lovely Mills Loughran uh, yesterday. He's got a new album out. And he sent me. Oh, the, good. He sent me a bunch of cool songs. People, go look up Nils Lofgren's new album. There uh, was one for Amy. One for yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. There's this great song for Amy, but there's he he sent me one about um God, I don't have my phone. Uh, the name of it. Uh, I listened to it and I sent it to I sent it to Billy and Billy was like, "Oh, this is great. It's about it's about his 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 struggle through uh, drugs and recovery. It mm -hmm. kicks ass and the riff in it. People, nothing's easy for Amy. That's the yeah, one. Ain't yeah. the truth enough? This new album. What is the name of the new album? Um, do you know? No, but I know that people? Ringo Starr plays Mountains. on it. Mountains. Ringo Starr is playing on it. Uh, we've got vocals Neil Young. from Neil Young mm -hmm. on it. It's like, what? Who like are these guys? This is <laughs> like Nils Lofgren is like, is a, such a badass motherfucker that they're basically, he just goes, hey, can uh, you, will Neil Young sing back up on it? Uh, Ringo, the guy from the Beatles, can you play? Play the shaker yeah. on this? <laughs> Get in on it. Ain't the truth enough is one of the songs that he's featuring. But anyway, it, the album's called Mountains. It is ain't the so truth good. And, and now being, playing guitar for now uh, seven or eight years and not, not well, I know, I just know enough to know how shitty I really am mm -hmm. and to know how good Oh, he really so is. we went and saw the cure and i yeah, had picked out these seats i this is a bucket list thing for me i've always wanted to see the cure mm -hmm. since i first became moody and petulant and wore black in you high school throw at the Hollywood Bowl. so i didn't know i got these seats they were re whatever you know where vivid seats bought them and because the show was sold out got them and kept thinking these are crap seats there's no reason why they were Dead. still available you, you felt robert smith's hair like, Dude, yeah. like i am not so wow we the were shadow in... of his belly we were in the shadow of his belly when what he was, was back it called? we were in the it was a front section pit, right at the front whatever. of the pit or the garden pit? the garden whatever yeah, it's maybe. called but there were seats but we were on the fourth row but you're in the band. all of us yeah, at that point could you can just stand up and most yeah. people did. And you're right there on the wall, right? Wow. Under, but we were right wow. there with him. That's cool. And we took Jen and Zach. And I'll tell you, um, you talking about Nils, it was a bucket list thing. Mm -hmm. It was really fun and really cool. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it again. Mm -hmm. Eagles, I, I desperately want to do again. Springsteen over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Seeing Nils, so you said this, um, Robert Smith and so his guitar. guitarist. So at one point, lead guitarist <laughs> and the other guitar and the bass player, they do that thing face to face where like they're jamming. Uh -huh. And again, I know enough about guitar now. I'm watching. But also, yeah. there's no solo. It's ding, 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 mm -hmm. ding, But when <laughs> Nils. It wasn't Nils going up so and down. So they're not following <laughs> each other. Yes. Where, where are you going? There was we no know where solo. We're going. It, they, yeah. You guys are playing both playing when rhythm. Nils and Bruce do like, it like, it's like or when um uh tom, tom morello, morello was yeah. with bruce mm -hmm. when they go face to face it's like prince oh, shit. Like, i don't know where you're gonna go so let me follow let me watch you no so, but they were doing it was like it was like the it, it we're was going posing. G, it was yeah d yeah. g e minor g e minor d and then, and I was, and then watching, again i was watching it going that's not they're not what but they both got their legs spread up, and I was like, they're not and watching their hands and nothing. It, when, when Nils goes solo, yes. So Nils, by the way, go to uh, go to YouTube, and the, so when Prince died, uh, Nils and yeah. I keep bringing this up. So Nils gets a call from Bruce. This is what I heard, uh, and, and Nils goes, "Bruce, I go because I, I saw it, and then I called. I, I'm like, Nils, what the f what the fuck? Yeah." Bruce calls that afternoon and goes, "Prince died. We're gonna open with Purple Rain." And and Nils Nils being the genius he is goes okay. Got to go. And he learn spends it. he goes and learns it. He spends four hours breaking it down, then adding his own thing. Watch the solo he does the first night they opened with Purple yeah. Rain. It's like mm -hmm. it's at one point Bruce just walks forward. I've said this before. Here's how good Nils is. Bruce Springsteen. It's Bruce freaking Springsteen. Yeah. Nils is jamming so hard. He, he and Nils is very, very deferential to Bruce. He mm -hmm. knows. He Nils knows where he, wh which band he's in. He looks at Bruce and he starts to back up, and Bruce goes, "Yeah." Sends him back out, and then he does this other crazy ass solo. So when we were watching Robert Smith and his guys, they were great. By the way, just to be clear, they were great. It was an unusual they concert. Were great. It, it was, was very great. unusual. Uh, the Robert opens... Smith is now a John Belushi character. Yeah, he's, yeah, a, he's a bizarre. He's a bizarre. He opened by kind of walking like this with his gut and he Hollywood Bowl sold out three nights 
and walks no to the side. He's got the crazy red lipstick and all that, but Here. he's yeah. But dad bod, you know. Yeah. And then he mm. goes kind of like this and stands and goes and looks at that section and looks around, not talking. Then he d goes over to this section. That was the opening. No talking, he, no music, he moseyed, he moseyed no nothing. He section to section, looked at the entire Hollywood Bowl, and then started. Then finally, put it the was guitar. really interesting. I said, mm. I said, I go to her, I go, this is the most unusual beginning of <laughs> concert I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like if I went out in, uh, in, in Ohio and just stared at the audience. And then stared at the audience. And stared For at the audience. six minutes. Yeah, or they couldn't so. clap that long. At one point, we're like, it's kind of quiet in here. Yeah. And he's still doing it. Was he out of breath? I mean, I don't understand I why. I think he was being with each section. He was looking people in the eye mm -hmm. and he was appreciative. And so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it wasn't evil. It was, it wasn't, no. yeah. He was like, he was grounding himself, yeah. I think. And, um, but it would be, they played a lot of songs, new songs dark well no they were they were those weren't new you just weren't Some a cure fan <laughs> but did he do a little help for my friends like a really good no but rendition? when he would hit you know um just like when he hit just like heaven they mm -hmm. waited to do that for their first encore and i would have come out bang out the hits man let's not do all the moody goth dark petulant music yeah bang out the hits yeah. and every time that would happen everybody would be up screaming again and so it was really surreal to have really love them and then to see them live but i wouldn't can i again. can i talk about the hollywood bowl uh concessions so i wanted one <laughs> glass of wine I thought, I'm, 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 oh I'm, yeah i'm gonna have one glass i just want a we glass were of, flying and you bought another ticket day I've, I've i've stopped drinking i've really you, yeah you, you can make, i've just cut my drinking down to almost just nil i mean mm -hmm. it went from like a bottle a half a bottle to a bottle a day mm -hmm. and to like once maybe once a week yeah and, uh, uh, and 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 then only one one two glasses at the most. Yeah. So uh, so I'm out and I feel so much better. I have to be honest. It has made a huge difference in my life. And right mm -hmm. and so I go. I'm gonna all right. I'm at the cure. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have a glass of wine. So they show back up. It's a plastic cup this big with an entire bottle of wine poured into it. And they're oh, like, shit. here, what I'm like, hell? I'm like, what? And they go, well, you have to buy the whole bottle. I'm like, well, I what? Don't fuck, fuck. I'm because, like, since when? Yeah. <laughs> because of the section we were in, the the pit or garden, the garden, uh, you can have servers. You have a wristband. You've got your own bathroom area. You've got servers. It's first class. It's yeah, grub, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was seamless or Grubhub or I, someone. I have a, th I have a thing. Even so they served him the whole bottle in a giant plastic cup. Now he could have put it down. I did. I had, we had cups. I kept filling. Her. You don't. You don't know how many times I filled your glass. I didn't. I just kept handing it back to you. And, and I just kept filling it. I didn't drink. Just you know, I had Friday maybe half. Of it. But she, she she's it like, I love this guy. <laughs> Jen. Uh, Jen had a whole bottle of white wine too. Which the next day, you guys were both commiserating, like, why? Why? We had to fly <laughs> but to they Ohio. They forced you to buy the whole bottle. You couldn't so just we, get it. Because you can't have it. glass. Yeah, but I in the garden area so they pour it they have to pour everything into plastic and but i think the way they buy it like it was crazy i was like this is way too much by the way about concerts yes we we brag about going to concerts it's not because i made a decision a long time ago i went to one concert where i sat up in the nosebleeds and i decided that if i'm gonna if i love somebody so much mm -hmm. that i'm going to go see them perform mm -hmm. live that's a big that's a big if mm -hmm. you're a fan of somebody you want to see them live it's a big deal yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah and you want to see the best you can I believe I believe in life that you there's certain things you should just go. I'm going first class on this, no mm -hmm. matter what. So I have spent money when I didn't have it to go to concerts that I was like, nope, the one because I don't go a lot. But when we go, I've been very blessed to be able to be close. Uh, well, we, Springsteen, know. we get <laughs> access. We got that. To, we're yeah, very we, blessed in the past to we have. have. We've been we've been lucky. Um, and Everlast, brilliant. Life. Yeah. Br coolest experience ever to have him right here, literally yep. right here. Where we're sitting, where playing we're live during COVID. Yeah, that was awesome. It was the he, and, but the first time we saw him, we thought he was amazing too. Yep, great performance. We saw him at his club in San Diego, man, and I toured with him. Uh, then we, that's how we got. That's how he went to Iraq. We went to Iraq together. I saw Everlast. I played yeah. with Everlast. Did a show with Everlast in a room, and at a Ford operating base in their in in their cafeteria with guys who had just come off a, a mission. And they mm -hmm. were still had dirt on them, and the, and they made them mandatory fun. Get in there. There's a show. <laughs> yeah. They were worried about us. I'm like, hey, you guys can sleep. You yeah. never last to play chess. It's fine. Uh, that's that's the one thing that AI will at least until yeah. there's some incredible. You, unless you're Daft Punk, AI could is not going to replace. 
like a human, no. wa- seeing a human perform the thing Did you, you know like. Daft Punk retired finally? They took the helmets off? No. And it was a robot underneath? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, that'd be bad. Uh, it's like way funnier. Yeah. It's another, it's another robot. Helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, their career spanned, I think, like 40, 30 years. 30 years. I told him it was the most brilliant thing ever to wear the helmets because they never age. Yeah. So his kids, we are taking them to school and they're rocking out to Daft Punk. Mm-hmm. I rocked out to Daft Punk when I was in high school and they had already been around for you, right? They never aged, yeah. but they uh, retired last year in 2021. And Steven Tyler put the helmet the on. Is there a picture of what they look like? Uh, let me see. It's like a Crip Keeper underneath. <laughs> so that one song. Um, yeah. Uh, um, around the world. Night, night to get yeah. lucky. Night to get lucky. What? <clears throat> um, we're up all night to, to get, get lucky. lucky. Well, <laughs> it sounded like... <laughs> Chad, we're going to school when Exxon came out. And he's going, he's going, why is it saying Mexican lucky? <laughs> <laughs> it got the Mexican lucky. And it kind of sounds like it. I'm like, why is it saying Mexican we lucky? We were fine with him thinking it was that instead of, we. he was a little young to talk about getting lucky, what it meant. Um, I, I don't know. I'll Mexican find it. Lucky. But yeah, they, they finally said they're done. 30 years, 30 year career. They tried already. You remember when um, they had the Tupac uh, hologram at uh-huh. Coachella? They've tried. You're right. It's not going to happen. The one thing they won't be able to replicate is though I'm, I'm sure vegas will put on a robotic show i'm sure but it will well it's it like will, a chuck e cheese i mean you can yeah you but know, it I, won't be but it won't be well i mean if you look at what disney did with the hall of presidents i mean there's always something it's possible um what i would go pay to see is like the uh boston uh robotics uh things doing flips and stuff i'd mm-hmm. go see it cirque du soleil with robots I'd yeah, go yeah, see yeah. It, yeah but it would not last very long because you'd be it's boring and they're programmed to do exactly the same thing right you know, you, you know the thing about even what robert smith was doing it creeps some people out but i said to him later he was being with all of us mm-hmm. there was an appreciation and he it would be very easy to become untethered performing yeah. in a sold out Hollywood bowl. And so he's grounding himself. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm here with you. I'm looking. I'm you. And he you. would go I'm from you, you yeah. to him, to me and look, you know, and th- the connection of Springsteen, Beyonce, one of the best live performances I've ever seen, connecting with their audience, getting emotional, being mm-hmm. with people, looking people in the eye, reacting off of Bruce reacts off of mm-hmm. what people are doing and the signs they have. You could never replicate that. Yeah, yeah, it's a shared experience that you it's something in you emotionally that you can connect with. Yes. And if right. you yes. know that when it, and when it's the best, it's literally like you're yes. tuned in. Yes. And there's potential like flaws and mistakes mm-hmm. that end up to be end up being like great mistakes. Yeah. That if this yeah. is if you're looking well, at a hologram or a robot that's something pre programmed, yeah. you're not you, all no automatically you're not gonna have that humanity, same connection. Yeah. Uh speaking of this, recently I saw it was on it was on Instagram. Someone was filming Bruce. He's he's in he's touring Europe right now, he's in Amsterdam. Oh yeah. And as Springsteen, he's finished his song, he's wearing high tops and he gets on and he steps up the riser and on the third riser, he trips and goes oh. down. Mm-hmm. By the way, so great to watch a guy who, who he protects his guitar. All the way <laughs> he's holding it, he holds it up and oh. Nils, Nils runs over and grabs it, grabs it out of, out of his hands and they help Bruce up and Bruce, Bruce turns to the audience, he goes, Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but that wouldn't happen with a robot, you know? And, and yeah. then he started um, playing. Us seeing him, that happy accident of Tom Morello coming to see them perform before Tom Morello went out on the road with them, doing the Ghost the, of Tom Joad. We got to we see were, the first night they did Ghost of Tom Joad together. We, and, and I turned around and go, you'll never see this again. We knew, yeah, everyone but, knew in the arena that we were part of something really special because Tom Morello at one point is doing the up and, uh, you know, and mm-hmm. Bruce just stands back like you could see him like, Steve Van Zandt goes, shit. you see him mouth, what the fuck? <laughs> and then because of that, they tour together. So yeah. it's stuff like that you would never. Yeah. So people, I'll tell you this one thing, even when I had no money and uh, <laughs> if you want to go see somebody great, uh, you'll get the money back. It's just money. You, and, you know. um, I was thinking it was there. Things have happened to you on stage, like when your tooth fell out uh, in Dallas. My tooth shot out in the um, lights, yeah. This week, it was, I, I had veneers and, and, and came, they used to come unglued because my uh, dentist was, uh, uh, oh, he was he was psychotic. 
Go watch actually, that special now. Zero side effects. Right, zero it's side available it, for free on Teeth YouTube. Went dink in the lights, and I can see it. The lights reflect. And I, like, Boom. And I told the honest, well, wow, my one of my tooths just came out, and they thought it was awesome. This weekend, you got off stage. I forget what night it was, and you were so grossed out. Do you remember this? Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what night was this? I don't. I wasn't gonna say, but but you know who you are. Somebody. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> kimchi farts, or and that's like how they, good you were. They had eaten. I'm in the front row. Listen, assholes, <laughs> get up, walk outside. Someone in the front row, it, and it wafted up. They dropped yeah. a nuclear Damn. potato <laughs> of pure shit, and then I'm walking through it. Here's how bad it was. Now you smell it. You ever have before you could taste? I'm like, Ugh. and I don't know. Oh. I, and I was like, I'm walking this. I'm in the middle of a bit. I'm like, I, I, I. Oh. Was it, did they yell out, this is what I think of you no, before that? Like, yeah, I don't fart heckle me. Don't fart heckle me. Don't, don't, That's don't. what he said. He got off stage. He goes, I just got fart heckled. <laughs> Which you don't under, you, you know, when you're performing, you guys might not know this, You your body goes to a, a different level. Uh -huh. You don't feel anything. You're not sick. You're it's thinking, pure adrenaline. You're thinking 50 times faster so than you normally think. So for him to notice something like that, it had, to, I go, you noticed? It you was could eye smell. crossing. I walked across the stage. <laughs> He's like, I got to bring this up. And I thought, nope, nope, nope. It's going to be weird because then I'm going to, whoever's, no one's going to. Was anybody passing out next to uh, the. Man, it was like, so it was, it was, they were right at the stage. It was like. It's like a crop three, circle. Like five, it just, it, it, they crop everything laid definitely. down. Yeah. And I, and I was like, I'm, and I, and I started doing this thing where I'm like, which one of you motherfuckers? I'm like, I'm looking for who it could have been and starting to make weird judgments <laughs> on people. And then I realized, get back in the show, dude. It was horrible. It had to be, you know, it had to you be should. really wow. bad to notice. Yeah. It was like one that. of those ones where it, that. Yeah, you could taste it. I'm like, <laughs> but the food that they serve in the clubs is maybe yeah, not, not the best. It's a lot of cheese, a lot of cheese on that front row. Yeah, um, I could have been that guy's fighter pilot name. A lot of cheese. <laughs> wow, wow. We are. We have a few weeks off. Yay! Um, I'm gonna get that car. I'm finished. gonna go check on my old pops, and uh, we. But we are going to be in Nashville at Zany's. We haven't been there in quite a while. Right. So June 23rd and 24th, the weekend after Father's Day. Oh, crap. I could be with my dad for Father's Day. Um, Nashville, Zany's, 23rd, 24th. That Go Campaign Vintage Hollywood Night is June 10th. So come see us then. And yeah, I just, I'm excited about having a few weeks off and being able to farm. Well, I get to finish that, uh, maybe that car. We got to get these cars out of here. I mean, I've been sitting here for years. As long as Kim Kim, I guess I've done some. I've been here though. 29 years. <laughs> <laughs> You've been saying it's a, I'm going to get to finish the car. I got the same thing. And we're going to um, and we're going to Also finish. coming up in July, Omaha, that those shows always sell out and they were already pretty packed when I talked to her last week. Uh the very so that's the 14th and the 15th and then the 28th and 29th is Des Moines Funny Bone and then Kansas City Improv. And guys, uh we're going to be doing the sketch show. We're filming the rest of the sketch show. Uh we we got we had a big glitch and we couldn't do it, so we will be doing it in June. And you and it gives him and us more time to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. We good? I'm good. Are you uh, good? Well, Except I mean, for my people, go get yeah. Nils uh, Lofgren's new album. Holy shit! It is so good, and and it's like a master at his at the best he's ever been. The guitar, the riff in this song that he played. Really I need to hear the song. So good. It's like it's so good. Uh, it, it is. It, I'll tell you, what, it's better than the Cure, is what I will say. Well, I love Nils, but I will say just like. Uh, you have to admit, Robert Smith sounds insane live. He sounded just perfect, like just like the, yeah, just, just like, like the just album. Like it, yeah. which is weird. Remember back in the day, mm -hmm. this is the old person thing when people Bruce sounds actually sang just like what yeah. he sounds yeah. like mm -hmm. live. Everlast mm -hmm. even better. Live. Prince all the way to the end of his life. Prince, mm -hmm. but yeah, so he he was we were blown away by how good he sounded. Yeah. But um, anyway, so Knock 'Em Dead, the podcast is coming out. We've had this whole migration thing happening with Libsyn, so now we have. We got moved. I need to tell you about all that. But um, it's happening in a couple of weeks with a really, really, really cool first guest. Guys, thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for listening. Go to Christopher Titus TV. Um, nine of my specials are up there now. The new one, Zero Side Effects. Guys, thanks for all the good comments and everything you guys say. Uh, go to ChristopherTitus.com for any merch. There's a new shirt coming out, uh, a new Carrie Monster shirt, tour Super shirt. Super cool. Yeah, and posters. We're going to do posters too. And now. And now. I know. Don't what forget. I'm doing. What are you well, doing? Well, we almost forgot him last week. Oh. And now. It's time for Highlanders, Highlanders Fun Facts. facts. 
Highlanders Fun Facts! Highlanders Fun Facts! I'm ending on the, on the wrong note. We Facts. Well, the opening was really shite, but you really brought yeah, it you home, brought it. and yeah. it was okay. good. Good, all right. Yeah, the end of Now, it. what do we got? Well, I have um, two speaking ofs. Okay. Two, two speaking ofs. Okay. Speaking of Dolly Parton. Yep. She once entered a Dolly Parton lookalike contest. <laughs> no way. And lost. <laughs> no way. Even better, speaking of, she lost to a drag queen. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Where was that? Uh, I don't know. Do- Dollyville. Where? I don't know. That's don't insane. Know. And she lost. <laughs> That's it's, it's like Danny Trejo saying That's- once that he was tired of reading breakdowns, like auditions that said a Danny Trejo, Trejo type. type. And he's like, <laughs> I need work. Let me work. Yeah. It's like me going up for uh, Joel McHale looking like contest exactly. uh, and, and Joel McHale being in it with me and losing. That's awesome. Well, it's like Chad GPT saying, write this like Christopher Titus. And it's like, <laughs> hey, oh, uh, by yeah. the way, guys, 75 percent of the Armageddon update was written by Chad GPT. I just punched up some stuff. Uh, so it was weird. It, there was a there was a weird. It's weird. I, I, yeah. AI is a little weird. Hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully we won't end humanity. And if we do, <laughs> what the last Armageddon update will be like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for listening for myself the lovely bomb show and the Highlander later peace Nigga. out I almost messed up your app go ahead you know. there can be only one no later bye peace out there can be only one there you go